out its hip, so we're freaking out right now. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, it's an episode I've been wanting to do for a while. We're going to be looking at the family dynamics, specifically the allegation that Candace was jealous of her sister, her sister that went missing 12 years ago. Now, in order to substantiate this allegation, we are going to look at some supporting evidence in six particular dimensions, including some of Candace's own Facebook posts, as well as some of the statements made by her ex-friend, Alison Harris. In other news, there was a little bit of a prayer circle held today, although there wasn't much of a turn up. I think it was just Candace, her mother, and some of her brothers that were there, and maybe two members of the community. And the prayer circle was organized by a young man, a obviously a, a religious guy, um, but obviously doesn't seem as though there was much community support. Do you think there should be? Do you think there should be community support for both Donald and Candace? Before we get to today's episode, if you haven't subscribed, please do like, share, leave a comment. Thank you to the couple of hundred people who've subscribed over the last day or so. And let's get started. So it's from Alison Harris that we learned that Candace was jealous of Summer. And that was something that came up more than once in that long discussion held on the, I think it was the Unmasked channel. This allegation that Donald gave her a lot of attention and that she was his favorite. Um, and that led to Candace feeling jealous. That statement came up more than once during that conversation. And that brings us to our second point, the supporting evidence. And what I want to deal with here is, first of all, the statement that Candace apparently made saying that, I'm not going to repeat it verbatim, but referring to her sister, I think her mother was crying, missing her daughter, Rosemary, and Candace's response was quite harsh and even ruthless, just saying the B-I-T-C-H is dead, um, and why are you crying? Something like that. And one wonders whether that vocabulary might um, also float up in, in Candace's mind with regard to her daughter, right? One wonders whether that might come up, you know, later on, that, that she might say that in a moment of, um, you know, being under the influence of something. But you might say, Alison made that up. That is not the way that Candace speaks. But you may recall on television, uh, on camera, Candace actually said what the um, what Macbeth had said about I think his great grandmother. He said, you know, she's a and then those those expletives were bleeped out. So you do get a sense that um, she's rough around the edges, to put it mildly, and that based certainly on that, it makes sense that she would have said what Alison Harris has repeated. Do you agree with that? Then uh, Candace has also put up Facebook posts talking about getting into trouble. And if we get into trouble, it's my sister's fault. Right. And um, that is basically touching on the sense of sibling rivalry. Now, I don't think it's any mystery. I don't think it's rocket science to say that what can cause jealousy with any person is someone else getting a lot of attention. You can have that with animals. You can have one dog getting jealous of the attention of another dog. You can have it with um, someone on their phone a lot being jealous of that. Someone, you know, it can, it's really just competing for, for the attention that one tends to feel these feelings of impingement, of insufficiency, of inadequacy, of insecurity and what that eventually translates to is kind of a feeling of frustration and and it can ultimately be a feeling of jealousy now if candace felt those feelings of jealousy 
between, in other words, she seeing she sees what kind of attention Summer's getting from Summer's father. Could some could Candace have gotten feelings of um, jealousy from other people as well, in other, in, including from her sons, that her sons are enjoying being with with their sister more than their mother or something like that. And one wonders whether the relationship between the children, the, the, the boys and their sister, whether that might have brought to the surface some of um, Candace's own childhood memories of her own sibling relationships. What do you guys think? Now, you might not think sibling rivalry among adults is a thing, or some of you might not think so. I can tell you that I'm experiencing it in my life. Um, I've learned to sort of live with it. I've learned not to uh, harp on about it. You know, if that's the way it's going to be, I guess that's the way it's going to be. Um, but I've definitely experienced that myself. Um, I could name all the things, um, but I'm not going to do that. I, all I'm saying is that it is real and we're going to deal with it in some detail through the website Very Well Mind in a moment. But of course, there's also the classic biblical reference, and that's point number four, Cain and Abel. I mean, what is that all about? And, you know, I think um, it's it's sort of obvious to most people that the Cain and Abel story was all about jealousy and favoritism and, and the perception that Cain had that God favored Abel, right? And um, the first epistle of John, according to this, says, do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and, you know, did away with his brother. Does the same apply to Candace? And if, if it did, did that then apply also to Summer? Or did something happen with Summer and something was just repeated? The covering up was just repeated in a sense. So there are some pretty interesting reasons for adult sibling rivalry. Some of the reasons for rivalry between little children are kind of typical. You know, you got a bigger size of cake than I did um, and might sometimes seem petty, although they are actually important. It is important to stand up for yourself and to demand your equal share. And it's also important that parents are... Um, fair towards their children and you know don't show favoritism but that is a key reason for adult sibling rivalry is parental favoritism right it's a reality uh, parents might try to hide it and might try to you know um, appear to be equitable but they can't always keep it up i know in my family there's a very strong sense of that of you know everything needs to be fair and you can't get that because what about your brother and sister, or whatever. And although that was um, ostensible and very kind of explicit, that certainly wasn't uh, kept up. Um, it's also a common feeling, this is from Very Well Mind, for people to feel that a sibling has always been favored by a parent. Um, even this may not be recognized or acknowledged by the rest of the family. So. You know, you might say it, but um, it is not something that is actually admitted to. And um, it hurts to be the less favored child. It certainly does. It, it hurts their feelings of anger, frustration, insignificance, and so on. Some of the reasons for it, though, are geographical proximity. Um, someone may live closer to the parents or even live with them. So I certainly had that uh, experience. I know um, in my grandmother's case uh, my father's sister lived one or two doors down and so that that was a factor there but geographical proximity can always be a factor i've lived overseas for some years and that probably um, caused me to lose touch to some extent with my family shared personality features so you might have um, a similar personality to someone and then they it's almost like being with themselves, maybe a bit of narcissism there. And so they think the same way and they understand one another more easily. Then the other factors that could be beyond one's control, this is from very well mind, such as worldview, politics, maybe one's ethics, maybe one's attitude to, um, you know, believing in God or not believing in God, 
um, one's attitude to um, hedonism and using certain substances. And some people want to participate in that and other people don't want to. And just to that extent, you might be more comfortable hanging out with one person than someone else. One might be seen as a stick in the mud and a killjoy and the other one as fun to be with. It's also important to bear in mind, this is again from Very Well Mind, that favoritism can affect mental health. It can negatively affect the mental health of children and um, it can certainly have negative consequences. You can have strained sibling relationships. And I think those relationships form the basis for other relationships, friendships with others and, and how one treats one's co-workers and so on. Um, the standards you have in terms of how you treat your siblings and how the family unit is managed then you know, overflow into other relationships. Um, research has also found in terms of the very well mind research that parents do often feel closer to one child. And you know, obviously in the case of Candace and her mother, it's now Candace and her mother. But one wonders what was the case earlier in the backstory period. A study from Cornell University, including interviews from 275 mothers in their 60s and 70s and their 671 offspring, 70% uh, of the mothers could specify a child to whom they felt closest. I, I know I can say this quite um, with, with, with honesty and confidence that I was the closest child to my mother. I mean, she's no longer alive now, but I was definitely um, the closest to her. And I think there was some, perhaps some resentment because of that as well. Um, interestingly, only 5% of interviewed offspring felt that there was equal treatment by their mothers. That's very little. The impact of this favoritism, favoritism can be lasting. That's certainly true as well. Research suggests that the effects of perceived parental favoritism can last through life. So in other words, you can go through life feeling like you're a victim or you're being passed over. And some of those feelings can be to some extent true, can be to some extent real, to, can be to some extent justified. And so I think the, the greatest gift that parents can give their children is to give them a sense of being valued and also to give them a sense of being that, that independence, including emotional independence, is a value, right? And this brings us to the sixth and final point, the reasons why Candace was jealous of her sister Rosemary Bly. I don't know if it's, again, rocket science to say this, Rosemary, when you look at pictures of her, she looks, bear in mind, she was a lot younger then as well, but she looks like quite a sweet person. She looks like a nice person. She's, she's quite attractive. Um, she looks also like she was um, not excessively overweight. And perhaps there was a um, difficulty, for example, if in terms of the opposite sex, Candace probably or possibly found it difficult to find love, whereas did her sister. Candace possibly found it difficult to find um, friends even, whereas did her sister. Um, her sister, in her mind, may have been someone who just did everything right and couldn't do anything wrong, and whereas she was the, the black sheep. And certainly that idea of the bad girl, that seems to be quite front and center. We see it on her Facebook and we get that sense. And one wonders whether it wasn't the opposite with Rosemary. Was she someone who was who would finish something that she started? Was she someone who was perhaps better educated? Um, was she someone who has had better prospects in life? Was Candace feeling kind of outgunned by her sister? Was she feeling that she just couldn't compete? Was she feeling that she was sliding back and, and not getting anywhere? In effect, did she feel jealous? And I think the answer is likely. But we can only know the answer for sure from people who knew them both and who were close to them. So if you're one of those people, please get in touch. Let us know. As I said earlier, today is the 21-day anniversary of Summer's disappearance. And so there has been some acknowledgement of that in the news media. At the same time, the law enforcement aren't saying anything. They haven't released any more statements. I think 
The last statement was quite a few days ago. Um, this suggests that they are discreetly following up leads, but they are still petitioning the public, asking the public for information, which means whatever they have, they don't feel is, is uh, sufficient. And so the investigation continues. By the way, if you would like advanced um, releases of this information that you're getting on YouTube, um, I do put it on Patreon first. So those people, there are about 600 or so people, patrons on Patreon, uh, get the first look at some of this information. And there's also a lively discussion going on there. So if you're interested, head to www.patreon.com slash TCRS. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.